don't forget to check out my podcast, AD History, where me and my co-host Paul are retelling and evaluating world history from 1 AD all the way up to the present day, decade by decade. You'll be able to find it wherever you choose to listen to podcasts. We have the Romans to thank for the name Germany, in fact none other than the most famous Roman himself, Julius Caesar. In one of his writings he spoke of a tribal people he called the Germani, people the Roman had come into contact with who resided in modern day Germany, and because of these people the Romans dubbed their land Germania, which transformed into the name Germany we have today. Though it wasn't just the Germani people who lived in this land, all kinds of different tribes of people lived in the lands that would become Germany, and all these tribes had different names. Because of this, different outsiders gave the land different names depending on what Germanic tribe they first met or had to deal with most. In example, the French dealt a lot of the Alemanni tribe, so to them the country became Alemange. Meanwhile, Finnic speakers in Finland and Estonia interacted more with the Saxon tribes, so they named the land Saxa after them. While all these other people were given their land a name, the actual people of the land thought themselves as just people, so named the land after their word for of the people, which was Feudisk, which eventually evolved into the German name for Germany, Deutschland. Now, while this video isn't really about how the nation as a whole got a selection of its many names, I feel it's only right to start with this, as the many names of Germany kind of explains to us just how important the various regions of Germany are. Germany really is a country built on its regions. For the longest time in history, there was no nation called Germany, but just a collection of Germanic states that shared very little in common other than languages that all sounded somewhat similar, and it stayed this way all the way up until the 18th of January 1871, where after war with the French, the various Germanic states were unified simply into the single nation of Germany. This was all done under the guidance of Otto von Bismarck, a statesman who went on to become the first Chancellor of Germany, and luckily enough was an incredibly German looking man himself. What a coincidence. Because for so long Germany was little more than an ununified series of states, many of these states built strong images for themselves, and are perhaps just as well known as the nation as a whole. A name like Bavaria conjures up a strong image in one's mind of greenery, castles and beer, whereas Berlin conjures up an image of modern history and a much more modern design. At least for me it does anyway. And Bavaria and Berlin are both states of Germany, except you may have noticed that one is a huge area of land and one is just a single city. This is because the states of Germany really do vary in size like this, which you will see as we look into them. And Germany has an incredibly rich history, in that many states have disappeared, or have only come into existence in the last 30 years or so. I really don't think there are many countries that have changed their borders as much as Germany has. Just look at maps of Germany throughout history. Today however we are looking into the here and now, and today Germany comprises of 16 states, so it's these 16 names we'll be looking into, and as for their names, it's their English names we'll be checking out. Whilst, as we mentioned, the country itself has really different names in English and German, the names of its states aren't as different. On the whole, they aren't completely different names with different meanings for the states between languages, it's just that in their English names, words we have in English are spelt in English. I'm rambling now. This will make more sense as we go along. And let's start up in the north of Germany with the state of Schleswig-Holstein. This state, as mentioned, is the most northern point of Germany and its northernmost border is Denmark's southernmost border. Because of how close the land is to Denmark, there have been wars and arguments over which country owns the land, and it has even belonged to both countries. Because of this, there is a very mixed population of Germans and Danes living in this land. It is also nicknamed the land between two seas, as to its east is the Baltic Sea, and to its west is the East Sea, which saying out loud is pretty weird, but we live on a globe, one person's east is another's west. The name of this state is of course from joining up the two historic states of Schleswig and Holstein. The name at Schleswig comes from the Schlei, an inlet from the Baltic Sea in this land, and the Wig slash Wig suffix means bay in Old Norse, so the name means the bay of the Schlei. The Holstein part of the name is believed to come from a tribe of people who lived here called the Holkate, which is believed to mean dwellers in the wood. To the east of this we have Mecklenburg West Pomerania, which is known as Mecklenburg Vorpommern in German. This state seems to take pride in their natural landscapes, almost 2000 kilometers of coastline along the Baltic Sea, and the picturesque ancient towns that look like they have come out of fairy tales. The current Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, has her constituency in this state. Like with the previous state, this state's name derives from merging the historic regions of Mecklenburg and West Pomerania. The region of Mecklenburg was named after a castle that once stood here called Mecklenburg Castle, and it's believed this name means in Saxon a big castle, so despite the fact this castle no longer stands, we can presume it would have been pretty big. 
and of course West Pomerania comes from the fact that it was the western part of the former region of Pomerania, with Pomerania being a region that runs across the Baltic Sea in what is now Germany and Poland. Because part of Pomerania was Polish, the name comes from the Polish Pomozi, meaning by the sea, as it's by the Baltic Sea. And yes, a certain species of dog has this region to thank for its name. As I mentioned, some of these states are simply just cities, and the city of Hamburg is one of them. Hamburg is the second largest city in all of Germany. It's also huge, just as many people live in the greater Hamburg area as they do in the entire country of Norway, and Hamburg's harbour is almost as big as Copenhagen. It's a huge maritime industrial city that has a state unto itself. With Hamburg, you'll once again see the Berg suffix, which means castle, but the hard part is thought to possibly mean bend slash angle, as the city was built on a bend of a river. And of course, a certain kind of food has this city to thank for its name too. The smallest of all of Germany's states is called Bremen. It's actually split between two separate land areas, both within another region we'll talk about next. Not only is Bremen the smallest state, but it's also the least populated in Germany, consisting of just the city of Bremen and Bremenhaven. The city's name is thought to come from the Saxon Blem or Blimo, which means edge or brim, as the city was built on the edge slash brim of the river Visa. As mentioned, the state of Bremen is completely engulfed in another state, with that state being Lower Saxony, which in German is called Niedersachsen. Lower Saxony is Germany's second largest state in size. It seems this state is really well known for their horses, so much so there's a horse on their flag and coat of arms. The Saxony part of this name comes from the name of the Saxon Germanic tribe, who yes, along the Germanic Angles helped form the Anglo-Saxons, who inhabited the island of Britain. Saxon is thought to come from the German Saxa, meaning warriors with knives, coming from the old Nos Sax, meaning knife slash sword slash dagger. Now, this of course also explains to us how the region of just Saxony got its name, which is more in the south of Germany. Though, this brings up the question of why there is somewhere called Lower Saxony that is more northern than the state of just Saxony. Well, the lower in Lower Saxony doesn't relate to cardinal directions, but more elevation. Just Saxony contains some of the Alps, and of course the Alps are rather high, so the Saxons who didn't live in the Alps were lower down, hence why they are Lower Saxony, despite being more northern. The name of Saxony also appears in the name of the region of Saxony on Holt too, which is east of Lower Saxony. We know all about the Saxony part now, so what about the Unholt part? It seems the Unholt part originates from a ruined castle called Unholt Castle, though from where the name of this castle comes from we don't seem to know. In the east of Germany we have the state of Brandenburg, and if you're anything like myself, you may be shocked to hear that Brandenburg is more than just a big fancy gate. While the state may be home to the city of Potsdam, one third of the region is protected land with mountains, tree-lined roads and lakes. We have the Berg part once again meaning castle, and I read the Brandon part means burn, so the name means burnt castle, which is pretty cool but why this castle is burning however I couldn't find out. And within the state of Brandenburg we have the state of Berlin, which like Hamburg and Bremen is the single city that is also a whole state. And of course Berlin is the capital of Germany, is a city steeped in a huge amount of history as one of my personal favourite cities in the world. Seriously, go to Berlin. As for where the name comes from, we have a few ideas. Berlin is a city heavily associated with bears, there's even a bear on their flag, and the name was thought to come from the name of these animals, coming from the German bar, meaning bear. But this is now considered something of a folk etymology. Today, it's thought to come from Slavic sources, meaning things like swamp or marshy place, as the city was initially founded on low marshy swampland. In the west of Germany, we have the state of North Rhine-Westphalia. This is Germany's most populated state and includes many of the nation's well-known cities, including Cologne, Düsseldorf, and Dortmund. This state was formed in 1946 from the previous provinces of Westphalia and just the northern part of the Rhine province. The name Westphalia comes from West as it's in the West, and Falia comes from a Germanic term meaning flat slash level, so the name means West Flatlands. Germany also has an East Falia, but that name doesn't seem to be used too much in any modern sense. The North Rhine part comes of course from the Rhine River in West Germany, with this river's name coming from ancient root meaning to flow. In Central Germany we have the state of Hesse. It seems that the name for this state is much like Saxony, in the fact it is named after settlers of the land, the Hessian tribe, though I was unable to find out where their name came from. Though interestingly for those with knowledge of the American Revolution, the word Hessian may ring a bell, as the German troops hired by the British to help them in the revolution were also known as the Hessians, and much like with Hesse, the state of Fluingia is too named after the Germanic people who settled there, the Fluingi, though we aren't too sure how those people got their name either. 
south of here we have the states of Rhineland Palatinate, the Rhine part we covered earlier with the Rhine River, but what about the Palatinate part of the name? Well, this has more to do with wine than the Rhine, as it's one of Germany's largest wine grown regions. In German, Palatinate is called Flatz, and this means palace slash high official residence. Saarland is a tiny nook of a state in the southwest of the country. It's the smallest state apart from the aforementioned city state, and its capital somewhat shares its name, being called Saarbrücken. The region is named after the Saar River, which runs through not just Germany, but France too. Baden-Württemberg is Germany's third largest state, and it came into creation in 1952, when the three smaller states of Württemberg-Baden, Baden, and württemberg hohenzollern merged together. We've had places named after people, castles and rivers, but it seems the Württemberg part of the name comes from a hill with the same name in the state's capital of Stuttgart, while the Baden part comes from the name of the spa town of Baden in the region, and Baden simply means bathing, kind of like how here in England we have a spa town called Bath. And finally, we have Germany's largest and perhaps most well-known state, minus the cities, Bavaria. The word conjures up the classic German image of lederhosen, beers, and beautiful scenery. Though, what about that name? Well, once again, we have a group of people to thank for it. This time, the Celtic boy people, which turned into Latin boyalia, and eventually into Bavaria. So, whether you are drinking beers in Bavaria, or eating hamburgers in, well, Hamburg, now you have a better idea as to how the states of this wonderful nation got their names. The states of Germany were suggested by Sebastian, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as name explains patron saint of the states of Germany. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a name explained video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just one dollar a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Stick around and check out another video and subscribe to step today on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Jojo at me to know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.